Hi, welcome to the part 25 of this video series. We are looking at the real certification questions for AZ 900 certification exam. These are all real questions. The chances of same or similar questions coming in the exam is pretty high. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. This is a playlist. Please refer this playlist for guaranteed passing of the exam. There is one more playlist. Those are old, but the questions are still relevant. Let's look at this question. So the question, the important line here is just this one. Azure Cloud Shell, you can track the regulatory standards. So whenever you see regulatory standards, go to Trust Center and just mark this answer and move forward. Do not waste your time in the exam. Cloud Shell is just a browser-based accessible shell so that you can use Bash or PowerShell to manage your Azure resources. Instead of like CLI getting installed on your desktop, you can do use Cloud Shell on cloud environment itself to manage the Azure resources. Cloud Shell is never, never used to understand the regulatory standards and compliance. We will lock this answer and move forward. See, in this question, it is story is simple. You have an Azure subscription and it contains resources which are spread across multiple regions like India, US, UK and so on. You need to create an Azure resource. You have to choose one of those here which helps you meet the policy requirement. The moment you see policy become very stupid, okay? The policy and policy, just and mark this as answer and move forward. But before we move forward, I'll explain you why A, C and D are not the answers. A is a read only log. It applies usually in a resource group and resource tagging concept. Reservation is applying to VMs. You can reserve and save the cost. You have to give a commitment of one to three years. That is the advantage of reservation. It is not used for compliance or regulatory purpose. The management groups is primarily used based on the subscriptions. You can use it to manage accesses, policies and compliance. It is used to manage these stuff. It is not a stuff which is used to meet the policy requirements, okay? So here, Azure policies, it is used to enforce organizational standards and access compliance. That's why in this context, option B is the right answer. How does it help? I'll explain you. Like we are seeing here, there are several regions. What happens in several regions? There are so many resources that it becomes difficult to comply to a standard. So you create a policy and suppose you create a policy saying that no, none of the regions can create a VM which is a huge GPU based VM and that will be implied throughout the, across the regions without any manual intervention. That is the advantage of Azure policy in real world. Let's look at this question. See, this question is very simple. You have websites, you want to secure them from attacks. That is one. The second is you want to generate reports to understand details of attempted attacks. Like who tried to attack it? Out of these options, first of all, firewall is used just to block the resources. You can create a firewall that people from a certain country cannot access these uh, network resources. Then NSG is a network security group. You can define some sort of access based on the ports, who can access it, who cannot access it. But it is not a primary tool to avoid attacks. Information protection is primarily used to protect your documents in S3. It can protect your documents and emails by applying labels to the content. It is used to discover and classify. For example, suppose there is a PDF file. It contains the social security number and the credit card number details. So it has to be protected. This PDF is on S3. We need to protect it. And in order to protect it, we use information protection. That's why C is wrong. That leaves us with D. That is DDoS production. This is exactly what DDoS is meant for. It is meant to avoid attacks. 
DDoS full form is distributed denial of service. So what is a DDoS attack? It, it is an attack which attempts to exhaust an application's resources. Suppose there is a website flipkart.com. Several people, uh, there are possibilities like 1 million people log in at one time. But in order to simulate that possibility, what hackers do is they create those kind of threads and attack the website so that the website goes down. The resources will get full and hence the website will go down. In order to avoid such attacks, DDoS will help you out there. This is the final answer. Let's look at this one. So this question is talking about Sentinel. What is Sentinel? Sentinel is meant for intelligent security analytics for your entire enterprise. So let us understand what it does. It collects data from where? It collects data from devices, users, applications, so on. And after that, what does it do is it detects. What does it detect? It detects uncovered threads. It tries to minimize false positives and so on. After that, it investigates threats with AI and hunt suspicious activities at scale. And then it responds to the incidents rapidly with built-in orchestration and automation of common tasks. So here the question is asking about you already have the Sentinel workspace and you need to automate responses to threats detected by Sentinel. What should you use? If you want to automate the threats, there are different options given here. Which one is the correct option? See the first thing first, if you are talking about Sentinel, just rule out security center. So A and D is gone. We are talking about Sentinel here. We are not talking about security center. So the answer has to be one from B and C. Let's look at B, service health. See service health, it gives you personalized alerts and guidance on Azure service issues. For example, there has to be a planned maintenance of a VM. So you can do that. It will do Azure incidents uh, and plan maintenance both can be taken care of here the issues with the service and plan maintenance this is not we are talking about in this question we're talking about threats boss threats threats is all about azure monitor workbooks see azure monitor monitors everything you can put in whatever kpis you want to monitor and it will also monitor the threats so it has alerts, it has, you can configure the metrics, it can go through the logs and so on, and it can work with any Azure service. We will lock this answer and move forward. Now let's look at this. They are asking DDoS protection is implemented at which layer? It, it is not implemented at application layer because application layer, we are talking about, for example, you have a VM and we have installed Informatica, suppose, on that VM. We are not talking about DDoS. DDoS, it is at the perimeter. It cannot be at a layer inside it is always at the outside because if you allow hackers to go three layers inside till the application layer then your hack will definitely happen so it will not happen at the compute layer or at the networking layer we avoid those checks at the perimeter level itself for example if you have a terrorist coming in from Pakistan to India. Will you stop the terrorist in Vishakhapatnam and South or will you stop the terrorist in Mumbai, in Punjab or will you stop the terrorist at the border in the Indian border itself? We will do it at the perimeter, Indian border itself. That is that is DDoS. DDoS, a military, uh, suppose an attack happens, our military people are trying to avoid these they will avoid it at the border itself. They will not allow them to come inside, cross Punjab, cross Rajasthan and get to the south of India. And then we say, OK, now we will stop you. It never happens. It is always at the perimeter. This is the right answer. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Please go through this entire playlist on AZ900. There is one more playlist, which is an old one, but the questions are still relevant. This brings us to the end of part 25. See you in the next part. Bye.